Hello and welcome to or welcome back to the Simply CA. Today we are going to do something a little bit different in our yoga practice. So you are going to want to have a dining room chair, a block, or a block-like substance. So if you don't have a yoga block around, you can use a few books. Something that has um, some like concreteness to it, so using pillows for this won't work, but something that you can use as a lift or a riser will be very helpful. And something of a strap-like nature. So if you don't have a yoga strap or if you don't have a strap that ties up your yoga mat, you can use a belt or you can use like a really thin tea towel would work as well. You want it to be long so that you can stretch your arms out with it, but it doesn't need to be anything special. So don't worry if you don't have these things, I'm sure you can find something around your house to make this work for you. Now in today's practice, we are going to strip it back, way back, and we are going to access the action of the poses. So BKSI Engar kind of was the creator of the tools that we use in a yoga practice. Now, a lot of people consider these to be props and they're seen as unnecessary. Now, Mr. Iyengar had a completely different view of these tools and they are designed to be just that, tools of the practice, tools to help you access the action of the practice. And so we're going to use these tools to help those of you who do not have the hamstring or the hip flexibility to practice yoga. We're gonna take away the excuses and we're gonna pull you into how to access these specific stretches using tools. We're gonna to start off with the strap-like substance that you have found, and we're going to do some arm circles. So again, if you don't happen to have something that can replace a strap, that's fine. You can 100% do arm circles without the use of a strap. We're gonna start off by getting a little bit of range of motion into the shoulders. So you're gonna hold your strap out you can hold as wide as you need. You want to try to keep your arms straight and you're going to move the strap or the band or whatever it is up and over and back and then bring it up and over and back. So as you're bringing yourself up and over, there becomes this point just behind your head where your low ribs are gonna flare out, your elbows are gonna bend, and you're gonna muscle to try and get your arms back there. Please instead widen your arms on that strap and that will give you the space to take your arms smoothly up and overhead. And if the mobility and the range isn't there, that's okay. Do this practice consistently. Practice is something we do consistently. I'm telling myself that. And you will see improvements. So if you can, or as best as you can, try to keep your low ribs pulling down towards your hips and back into your stomach, into your back body. Okay, we're gonna do one more of these. And then we get to let go of the strap for a moment. All right, release that down. Have it close by, have it nearby, just in case you need it again. Settle your feet to be hips width apart, give your shoulders a little bit of a roll just settle in here. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel your feet grounded into the mat. Feel your breath. Softly open up your eyes as you breathe in, reach your arms up and overhead. 
Now from here, you're gonna grab onto your right wrist. I apologize, you can't quite see that, but you're gonna grab onto your right wrist and you're gonna stretch up towards the ceiling and then take a little tiny tip towards the left here. So it's nothing excessive, it's nothing major. You're just trying to find a little bit of additional space through your side body here, a little bit through your ribs, the intercostal muscles that join each and every one of those ribs it can get a little sticky sometimes. So give yourself a bit of space to be able to find a deeper breath. Okay, as you breathe in, come back up through center. Just kind of reset by grabbing onto your left wrist. As you inhale, push down through your feet and reach up through your arms and then take that soft tip towards your right. Now again, the body has this really fun ability to make things easier for you, which is great. The unfortunate part about it is when we fall into habits of extension or contraction where we really don't need them to be, or they might not be beneficial, then we have to do our best to counteract them. So here the body is like, oh, you want me to reach up and over. Okay, so it'll, for me, it'll flare the low ribs and get all that extra space. And usually my bum will stick out as well. So consciously I am contracting my abdominal wall, anchoring my sitting bones towards the floor, pulling my low ribs down as I create more space through this side body. Inhale, come back up through center. Just give yourself a little wiggle and stretch. And then we'll release your arms down to your sides. Let's give the shoulders a little bit of mobility here. So just circle them out nice and softly. All right, inhale, arms reach up again. This time you're gonna open your right arm towards the, the, towards the front and your left arm towards the back. And then inhale, come up through center. We're gonna switch sides. So your left arm's gonna come forward. Right arm is going to reach back. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Now in this one, the body's like, oh, we're turning. So the body is going to move your hips and turn. Inhale, come up through center. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. But to create the twist in the thoracic spine, which is where we want it to be, you actually have to consciously pull your left hip back when you're twisting to the right. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back, right hip back. Inhale up through center. Last one. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back, left hip back. Inhale up through center. Exhale, release your arms down. And again, just give your shoulders a little bit of shimmy shake. All right. So you're gonna to come to your chair here and we're gonna use the back of the chair for the majority of the practice. And now this is one of these ones that, especially if you're sitting at a desk a lot, I love to do. So you're gonna reach your hands onto the chair, step your feet back so that your arms are straight and then you can soften your knees if you want to. Drop your head and pull your hip creases backwards as you reach your arms, your fingers forward. And this is just a beautiful way, especially if downward facing dog is extremely uncomfortable or challenging for you. This is a great way of getting that back body stretch without having to put the pressure on your shoulders or your wrists or your hands or relying on your hamstrings to be open. And I do love down dog, but this is a far more acceptable way to get a very similar stretch. The other thing about this particular place to be is that if you bend your right knee and look towards the left, you're gonna feel some lovely sensations through your right side, your right back. For me, it's in my right shoulder and then come back through center. And now you're gonna bend your left knee and look to the right. So you're just sort of dipping that left side. And keep pulling your hip creases back. This 
also helps to open the chest and then come back through center. And again, in center, you're just gonna allow your chest to hang down, but at the same time, see if you can create just a small rounding action in your lower thoracic spine. So there's a pulling in and up of your core, even as you try to stretch wide across your chest. I know there's a lot going on. Gently walk your feet in so that you can sort of roll yourself up and out of this shape. Again, roll your shoulders back. And then from here, we're gonna take this into a little bit of a flow before we get into the standing poses. So please make sure that your chair is still near and dear to you, close to the top edge of your mat. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hinge forward, knees bend, forward fold. Halfway lift, take your hands onto your shins or forearms to your thighs. Exhale, fold down. Now, if the fold doesn't work for you, you can keep your forearms on your thighs and stay in this shape. So if you have high blood pressure or low blood pressure, or you've got any other sorts of constrictions to a forward fold, you can stay here or you can use your chair. Release down, forward fold. Gently roll yourself back up to stand. Shoulders roll up, back and down. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, knees bend, forward fold. Again, you can pause and stay in that half forward fold or all the way. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to your shins, your thighs or forearms on your thighs. Exhale, fold down. Halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, stick your right foot back, and lower your right knee down to the mat. So you're going to have your front heel, your left heel, down on the mat. Make sure that you can see that. And then drop your pelvis down. Inhale, arms reach up. And then from here, we're going to take those twists again. So right arm forward, left arm back. This time, we're just going to continue in the one direction. Inhale to center, reach up. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Inhale to center. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, frame your front foot. Pick up your back knee and step forward, forward fold. So somehow find back to that forward fold again. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Flat back, inhale, stand up, reach up. Exhale, dive, forwards and down. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, with your left foot back. Lower your left knee down to the mat. Keep your right heel down. Inhale, arms reach up. So initially you're just setting the foundation here, making sure that your front heel is rooted into the mat, pelvis is Strong internally, drawing in, and sitting bones anchor down towards the floor. As you breathe out, reach your left arm forward, your right arm back. So we're getting that thoracic twist. Inhale to center. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Inhale to center. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Inhale up through center. Exhale, plant your hands, pick up your back knee, step forward, forward fold. Somehow again, find that forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, fold down, let it go. Flat back, inhale, stand up, reach up. Exhale, release your arms down to your sides. Give your shoulders a little bit of movement. And then we're gonna move a little bit closer in towards the chair or towards the block. So make sure you've got something. If you're in between, you've also got, see if you can see this, the bottom of the chair. So you can flip the chair around as well. So have everything kind of nearby you. Inhale, arms reach up. As you breathe out, hinge forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands up your right foot back. Now I'm gonna use some kind of a prop. You might have enough space using your block on the highest height. 
or you might need to move your chair and use that onto the side of you. As you breathe in, you're gonna lift and open your chest. And as you breathe out, send your hips up and back to this extended pyramid shape. Inhale forwards to a lunge. Exhale up and back into this pyramid. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale forward and exhale back. Good, now inhale forwards, bend that front knee and reach your arms up overhead. This is a lot of balance, so feel your outer hips pull internally towards the center of your pelvis to maintain and find some grounding and balance here. forward, scooch that walk off to the side, step forward, forward, fold, halfway lift, breathe in, and exhale, fold down. Good, halfway lift, breathe in, exhale, step your left foot all the way back, move that prop over to the inner edge of your foot, so you've got some space there. As you breathe in, take that runner's lunge, and as you breathe out, hips up and back, extended pyramid. Inhale forwards, runners lunge, and exhale, hips go up and back. Inhale forward, last one, exhale, up and back. Inhale, bend that front knee, reach your arms up and overhead, high crescent lunge. So this shape is all about opening up that back leg. So you've got your psoas, your other hip flexors, and your quadriceps maybe really getting into that front body opening here. Nice. As you breathe in, stretch and reach up, and as you breathe out, hinge forward, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Flat back, inhale, stand up, reach up. Exhale, bring your arms down to your sides. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hinge forward, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, step your right foot back, pivot down on your right foot so that your toes are, and heel are pointing towards the long edges of your mat. And then inhale, come on up, warrior two. So if you didn't take a long enough step, which I didn't, just walk your front foot forwards or your back foot backwards until you get a nice long distance between your heels. From here, you're gonna bend into your left knee and notice that your left knee is doing its best to track the center of your left foot. Now, if you can, try to indent through your right outer hip so that your hips are stacked between your heels your shoulders are stacked over top of your hips. And then from here, you reach your arms out. Now, if reaching your arms out doesn't work, don't worry about it. Bring your hands onto your hips. No baby. So from here, what we're trying to work, work on, what we're trying to focus on is this external rotation of both of the legs. So again, the body does these really smart things and it'll help you by sending your butt backwards, which internally rotates the legs, which is not exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So what I want you to focus on, and even if that means the front knee is not bent as deeply, is doing your best to, instead of letting the bum go backwards, to pull your butt down towards the mat. And then from here, that helps to externally rotate that front leg which helps to open up the hip flexors and the front of the pelvis, which is really key, especially if you experience low back pain. And do your best to soften into your breath. So I know there's a lot of cueing, but really this is more of that like foundational practice so that when you move on to the more fast paced classes, you have a really solid understanding of your body and those simple adjustments. All right, from here, as you breathe in, reach your arms up, 
Straighten out your front leg. As you bring it out, open up, warrior two. Inhale, straighten out your front leg, reach up. Exhale, open up, warrior two. One more, inhale, straighten everything out, straighten your front leg. Exhale, open, warrior two. Now from here, you're gonna keep your arms open, straighten out your front knee. So come to straight. Now, straight doesn't mean bent. I don't know if you can see that. It also doesn't mean hyper extended where you're shooting your knee back in space. What we want to find in straight is this location, I know, getting technical, this location where your thigh nicely stacks your calf and your shin. So it's not forwards, it's not backwards, it's in the middle. And here's the key. You know you're in the spot when you feel your muscles shaking because you're not in the joint, you're in your muscle. So as you develop the strength in your muscle, <laughs> so, there are lots of muscles there. As you develop the strength in those muscles, it will shake. And then you'll notice, okay, I can hold it for longer and it feels better. So from here, I am way too far away from my chair. From here, with that straight front leg, sorry for all the squeaking, you're gonna reach forwards to your chair, send your hips towards the short back edge of your mat and get space in your side body, your lower side body. Now this is Trikonasana triangle pose and it is probably my ride or die yoga pose. This is the shape that I love if I could practice one shape for the rest of my life, Trikonasana. You can have your arm reaching up or if that doesn't work for you, keep your hand on your hip. You're probably noticing your side body holding you up. Use your, the strength of your chair. Use the strength of your legs. Yes, your legs might be feeling some excitement. Try to lean your torso back, contain the rib cage get that back line stretching. Okay, gently soften your front knee. You're just gonna pivot yourself forward and step forwards. You can either come into a forward fold if that works best for you, or if that doesn't feel good for you, then just stand tall for a few moments. reach up because you might feel a little bit off balance. Exhale, hinge down, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, step your left foot back and you're going to anchor your left heel down so you're turning your toes towards the long edge of your mat. Right toes point forwards, inhale, come on up, warrior two. Again, if you didn't take a long enough step, ignore the noises, wiggle your feet further away from each other, anchor down through your pelvis, and notice if your body is trying so hard to help you by sending your butt backwards. Scoop your sitting bones down towards the floor so that you get this beautiful external rotation in your legs. Front knee approximately pointing towards the center of your right foot arms are out to your sides, or at your hips, or at your heart. Shoulders stack over top of your hips, and feel any kind of length and space that you can for your spine, and any kind of softening for your shoulders. Don't worry about the depth of this shape. Focus more on feeling that external rotation of the legs so that you can open your pelvis and your hip flexors. Your back will thank you. From 
here as you breathe in straighten it all out so straighten out your front leg reach up towards the ceiling as you breathe out open up warrior two inhale straighten out reach up exhale open warrior two last one inhale straighten reach up exhale open up warrior two now you're going to keep your arms out straighten out your right leg and reach your left fingertips forward now this time i'm going to take my block because it's nearer to me but you can reach for your chair in front of you as well try to spin your torso to point towards the left lengthen your side body and then the block on whatever height you need is outside of your shin otherwise you're reaching for the chair out in front of you left hand can be on your hip it can be reaching up towards the ceiling I'm not worried about your arms right now what I want you to focus on and I want you to feel is the strength in your right leg so that right quadricep muscle is hugging to the bone of your right thigh so your femur bone it's squeezing in and that gives your body this cue this signal that says that your hamstring is allowed to relax because your leg is doing the right things it's not over exerted in the wrong direction you're getting the side body length as well through your torso all right so we're going to gently come out of this shape as you soften your front knee you can let your butt kind of hang back remove your props and then either step forward into a forward fold or step up to stand your choice inhale halfway lift if you're in that forward fold exhale fold down stand up reach up and exhale release your arms back to your sides good work so we're going to quickly go down to the floor i am going to strongly suggest that you make a practice to do these standing poses with your props daily. soften your knees forward folds halfway lift breathe in exhale bend your knees and sink your bum down to the mat we're gonna roll down onto our backs you can stay as you are I just like to do it this way and then from here I know we've been doing a lot of external rotation but this particular stretch is so beneficial if you sit a lot because it stretches out the piriformis muscle which is where the sciatic nerve runs on top of underneath of or directly through so it's a really fantastic stretch and doing it this way gives a lot of space and freedom so from here you're going to cross your right ankle over top or sorry your right thigh over top of your left thigh and you want to cross as if you're sitting cross-legged in a chair so all the way up and over. Now from here, you're gonna pull your body, your thighs in towards your chest as much as you can. You can take your hands over top of your right knee. If you have space, you can take your hands over top of your left knee. A block underneath your foot, your left foot is also a really great place to be. So if you're unable to pull your knees into your chest for whatever reason just put a block underneath your right your left foot and that will help you to get into this shape 
if you do have a lot of flexibility with this internal rotation and you have the space, then you can take your hands to your shins and pull your heels down into your outer glutes. As much as you can, try to press your back into the mat. So again, it's not about how far you go in the shape, it's about accessing the action of the shape. We're gonna unravel this side. Just put your feet on the mat for a moment. Give your hips a little shake out from side to side. And then we're gonna cross over to the other side. So you're gonna cross your left thigh over top of your right thigh. If you need to, you can put a block underneath your right foot. That helps significantly or you can hug your right knee into, sorry, your left knee into your chest, or you can hug your right knee into your chest, or if you have this internal mobility, then you're gonna grab each one of your ankles and pull your heels towards your outer glutes. What we're looking for here is the left outer glute is gonna feel some tension in it, and that is stretching that lovely piriformis muscle and sciatic pain comes when that piriformis muscle well one of the ways that sciatic pain comes is when the piriformis muscle is constantly squeezing in and tight it doesn't let go of that nerve so you want to release the tension of the muscle so that it's not constricting the nerve. Try to keep your whole spine on the mat as much as you can. Gently release this side, place both your feet on the mat again, give your knees a little wash side to side. And for our twist to finalize this, you might want to use your block or you might want to use a pillow. So you're going to move your hips over towards the right and you're going to get, let your knees fall to the left. Now, if this feels unstable, you can put a block between your thighs or a pillow between your thighs. Or if your outer left thigh isn't reaching towards the floor, you can put a block or a pillow underneath it and then release yourself out into the twist. You wanna allow your upper body to be really soft and you want the lower body to be able to release into whatever is there. So it might be a block or a pillow on your outer thigh and it might be both inner and outer. Whatever you need to soften. If you do have a prop between your legs, go ahead and remove it. Come back through center, pause in neutral for a moment, and then we're gonna switch sides. So send your hips over towards the left, let your legs fall to the right. You might put a block underneath or a pillow underneath your right outer thigh. You might put a block or a pillow between your legs, and you might do both. Make yourself comfortable in this twist so that your body can soften and release into the support. Mm -hmm. 
You don't always need to struggle. You don't always need to effort. Yoga is the combination of effort and ease. Sira Stukha Asana. come back through center, release your props out, and then just give yourself a moment here. From here, I am going to strongly suggest, I know it might not have been like a full yoga flow practice, but still take this opportunity to give yourself time and space to release, to settle in Shavasana. to think of something that you are grateful for today. Take a moment to thank your body for everything that it does and for everything it allows you to do. I thank you so much for being here, for choosing this practice and for sharing this space. Please stay in your Shavasana and enjoy your rest. Namaste.